Hi, it's Mitch here from Reverse Mortgage Pros. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what happens at the end of a reverse mortgage. Let's get started. Now, if you're looking for free professional help with your reverse mortgage decision, please subscribe to my YouTube channel below the video. Uh, you can also hit the thumbs up and the like button and this will help you to get reverse mortgage videos that I produce to help you decide if it's right for you, uh, delivered to you and given to you whenever they're published. Um, you also get some of my articles and other advice. Everything is completely free, designed to help educate and inform Canadians about reverse mortgages. Now, a commonly asked question that I get is what happens at the end of a reverse mortgage? And a similar question is how do lenders make money? because remember, you're not making any monthly payments with a reverse mortgage. And it can be worrying to not know what you're leaving behind and how things are going to be handled. Um, so what I'm gonna do in this video is walk you through the different ways a reverse mortgage can end, how a reverse mortgage is eventually paid off, and it also includes other ways in which you can voluntarily choose to end a reverse mortgage as well. But before we get into the details on that, I'm just gonna quickly run you through what is a reverse mortgage in 20 seconds. It's a mortgage available to homeowners 55 and over that doesn't require monthly payments. You can get 10 to 55% of your home's value depending on your age, property, and location. You can get as much money as you qualify for, but any existing mortgage must be paid off first using the reverse mortgage funds. And it's designed to help you tap into your home equity for retirement and continue to live in your home for life. So because of that last point, living in your home for life, I do get asked, what happens at the end of a reverse mortgage. Now, of course, when a reverse mortgage ends, there's going to be a balance payable. The entire reverse mortgage balance, whatever was loaned plus interest, is now paid when it ends. And this is a point where the lenders make their money. Um, that, again, as I mentioned, was a common question that I get. This is a point where the lenders are going to be repaid with the uh, balance plus interest. Now, remember, you can't ever owe more than your home is worth. The amount of a reverse mortgage is capped at the value of your home, and 99% of Canadians have equity in their home remaining when a reverse mortgage ends and the balance is paid. Uh, one other thing before we get into the details, or I want to just quickly go over penalties. I have a full article where I walk you through penalties and calculations, but a brief overview of these because it's important when you're thinking about the end of a reverse mortgage. There are no penalties where all homeowners pass away. There's a 50% reduction where homeowners move to a care home. Otherwise, there are penalties payable on reverse mortgage. And the, the best way to think about them is they're quite high in the first few years, and then they're much lower after that. So if you're holding a reverse mortgage for more than three years, you don't really need to worry as much about the penalties. And if you plan on holding a reverse mortgage for the rest of your life, because you want to live in your home for the rest of your life, um, you don't need to worry about penalties at all because there won't be any penalties payable where you live in your home and you pass away at the end and that's how a reverse mortgage ends. <clears throat> now there are three ways that a reverse mortgage can end. So there's uh, the first way is where homeowners and spouses move out and it's no longer their principal residence. So that is often combined with the second way where you choose to end a reverse mortgage by either selling your home or paying it off. So you could move out and then sell your home. So that's number one and two. And the third is where uh, all the homeowners and spouses pass away. And that's where I want to spend most of the time in this video because the majority of people taking a reverse mortgage out in Canada are doing it to live in their house for life. Um, so the majority of you will fall into the third category, but I'll quickly go through the first two. So if you're moving out, the most common scenario I see is where you're moving to a retirement home or a care home. And in this situation, you likely don't want to keep your home. You don't want to keep paying property taxes and insurance on a home that you're not using. Um, so technically, you're required to inform the lender. Now, it is possible that you don't inform the lender and you keep the home and the reverse mortgage. And there isn't really any way for them to find out about that. But that scenario is pretty rare because usually you're moving out. You don't want to keep paying property taxes, insurance. And you don't really want to keep the, keep the home anyway. Um, so the second scenario is often combined with that. So you move out and you decide to sell your home or the other option here is paying off the mortgage. So if you decide to sell your home, of course, that's a point where the reverse mortgage would then end at the home sale. You can also remortgage to so basically take out a new mortgage with a, a different bank or lender and use that to pay it off. Or if you happen to come into some money 
you could use that money to pay off their reverse mortgage too. Um, one key point, and I'm going to enforce this throughout this video, is that the reverse mortgage is paid up off just like any other mortgage in both these scenarios. And really, one thing I really want to drive home here is that a reverse mortgage and how it ends and how it's paid off is almost identical to every other mortgage in Canada. There isn't any kind of trick here. There isn't anything kind of special. It's exactly the same almost as every mortgage in Canada. Now, the third way a reverse mortgage ends is where all homeowners and spouses pass away. And what happens in this situation is that the estate takes over the reverse mortgage. The estate actually takes title to your home. So your estate would be the legal owner of your home for a small period of time until the estate has been executed. But a key point here to, that I want to mention is that you can't really inherit a, a mortgage, a reverse mortgage or any kind of mortgage in Canada. So any mortgage that passes down to an estate when somebody passes away must be resolved by the estate. In the case of a reverse mortgage, they have around 180 days to inform the lender what they intend to do and start the ball rolling on that. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more because that's also something that tends to worry people when it shouldn't really. But the estate has to resolve this mortgage. Um, you can't pass a mortgage down to your 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 son or daughter, or grandsons, granddaughters. It doesn't work that way. You can't inherit a mortgage in Canada. They have to qualify uh, for a mortgage independently. So your estate has several options to resolve the mortgage. They can sell the home and use the funds to pay off their reverse mortgage. They can pay off their reverse mortgage with other funds, such as life insurance, other proceeds in the estate, other assets in the estate that they sell and use the funds from that to keep the home. Or the heirs can refinance or remortgage the home to pay off their reverse mortgage and keep it. So the title would pass to the heirs. The heirs then take out a new mortgage and they use that to pay off their first mortgage, or if they happen to have their own funds, they can use that to pay off their reverse mortgage and keep the home as well. Those are basically the three options that your estate has. In terms of timelines, there's a 180 day rule that is written in reverse mortgage agreements. In reality, this isn't really enforceable in court. It just has to be in there to, to, so that the estate is taking reasonable actions and not doing nothing to resolve the, and pay off their reverse mortgage. And the only reason this exists is that there has to be some kind of timeline in there. Otherwise, your estate could just sit on title, sit on the home and sit in the mortgage and never do anything. And the lenders would never get their money back. And many homes go over this 100 day limit. It happens all the time. I don't know of a single legal action, a single action that's been taken. Um, I don't think any court would enforce this because all this state has to do is show that they've been reasonable. They're talking to the lenders, they're taking reasonable actions, that they intend to pay off, they just need a little bit more time, and th there's no way a lender could ever take you to court under those situations, that situation, sorry. So in summary, there are a few ways a reverse mortgage can end. You can move out, uh, you can sell the home, and often you move out and you sell the home after. Uh, you can remortgage it or pay it off with money that you happen to come into or the homeowners pass away, which is the most common way a reverse mortgage ends. And when it ends, the process is almost identical as with any other mortgage in Canada. Mortgages can't be inherited, they can't pass down to, your, to the heirs. So the estate must resolve the mortgage through selling the home, remortgaging it, or paying it off. And um, those are the three options available. And again, those are the same as with any mortgage in Canada that's passed down to an estate when the owners pass away. So I hope this helps. Um, if you are interested in reverse mortgage, you can get a free assessment um, using my online assessment tool. I'll take a look at your situation and I'll advise you if this is a good solution for you or if something better works. All it takes is 90 seconds to fill out this assessment form. It's at reversemortgagepros.ca forward slash apply dash now or reversemortgagepros.ca forward slash assessments. And if you have any other questions or comments, something you didn't answer in the video, even unrelated to the video topic, it's not a big deal. Um, I personally review every single comment, every single question, and I respond to every single comment and question as soon as I can. Um, you can also contact me by email. I respond to every single email I get. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video.